right, guys. Welcome to the 1 in 20 show. I'm your host, Evan Rogers, and today we have with us Evan Reed, the infamous <laughs> <laughs> other Evan R. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Disney College program, which he was a part of, and why you should consider it. Um, Evan, we've been friends for about four years now. Um, I don't remember. Do you remember, like, our origin story? Like, how did... I think we met, we just, because you had been a part of Escape before I joined. Correct. And I think we were like fascinated that we both were Evan R. At least I was. I was interested I had by never that. met any other Evan in my entire life until you came into my life. <laughs> yeah. So when I saw this tall Henry Cavill looking being <laughs> come into Escape Theater yeah. and, uh, you know, it was, it was weird. I, I yeah. immediately, I thought you were, I thought you were a swell guy. Oh, well, and thanks. I thought I you were talented. Too. And, uh. I don't remember what show it was, though. Was it Beauty and the Beast, like, way, way back in the day? I think it was or Oliver, because it... Travis, my brother, did Beauty and the Beast right before that. So I remember seeing you in Beauty. Okay. And then I came in in Oliver, so that would have been but who introduced you to Escape, though? Was that the Marvel? Travis did, my brother. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that that would have been 2013. So f- almost, oh, wow. five years, almost five years ago. Almost five years. Yeah, five in the fall, right. <laughs> um, yeah, and we did six shows together i believe i want to say six yeah six i think it was six because it would have been maybe five or six oh because you also went off and did a couple shows away from escape i think and i was just consistent all the way through because mm-hmm. i didn't i didn't do any other shows but um we had a really good group of uh of tag along friends that we used to all hang out kevin valdez and that picture i found the other day of us just had me dying oh of it us had from, me dying too man yeah <laughs> so funny just like so funny um i feel like for a lot of people that program especially like kick-started um people into the arts in some ways like that was the first acting experience for a lot of people the first singing experience for a lot of people escape yeah. i'm talking about yeah um what was your what was your experience with escape like growing up in it? Cause I know you started young in it. Oh man. Yeah. I started escape when I was six. Wow. So, uh, when I was six years old, my very first show with escape was Annie. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, which I think they have done like five. Oh, they've times, done it way more than any other show. Yeah. It, it's practically like prophecy that you must do it every two years. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, so yeah. I was wacky, the dummy in Annie. Mm-hmm. That was my breakthrough performance. And then, which was on the that was during the the radio segment, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, Bert Healy and yeah, Bert Healy. Uh, yeah, all yeah. those little fun, yeah, that fun little number. Uh-huh. Uh, but then I ended up doing around, I want to say around seventeen or eighteen shows with Escape. Wow. Granted, and that's, I mean, granted, we've done a lot of the shows. Yeah. A lot of the same shows over and over again, yeah. but I've always either had a different role in that show or you know. I, I didn't the last realize show, it was that many. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, they do two. So technically, they do two a year. So that would, that would make. They do sense. two a year, and then Eight they also years. did the summer shows, and they did some yeah. of the cabarets, which I don't think I'm counting. But right, I think the last show I did, which I wasn't even, I was technically too old to even do it at that point, was uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. They, right, I came back for Pharaoh. But oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. I, I always forget that. That was they it. were asking me to do it too. Like they wanted us. I was both trying to, do to get it. you on board. Yeah yeah. <laughs> we were both been, just so busy though. You know that would have been that was two years ago even. Time really flies. I think that was no 2017. That was the beginning of 2017. Yes, I think yeah. It's been a full year. It's yeah. been a full year. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Um, and I I wanted to touch on too like before we get into Disney College Program is. Um, that you were big, you were a big advocate for the arts over at um, Canyon High School. Um, and you really, you know, for those years, I know that you were doing kind of both escape and that, but you really got involved over at Canyon. Um, and, you know, it was it was really cool to see you put it all out there for, for the, you know, for the whole program and, you know, all the different things that you had to do. But um, what specifically are some of the ways that you really like supported over there and, and brought things because, because the public school sector now as a result has become awesome in the, in the arts more mm-hmm. recently, we were just chatting about that before we started, but you can go into that if you'd like. I think in our situation at Canyon, and I'm not going to say this was, this was a man, one man job by any means. And right. this sounds cliched. It was definitely a team effort, Sure, um, but we noticed there was an issue. There was a lack of recognition between the high school administrators and 
our, our arts organizations, especially yeah. when it would come to, and I have nothing against people that are athletes or yeah. people that are involved with sports. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I right. was in cross country for a little while. Yeah. Um, but what it came down to, when it came down to when we had a losing football team yep. and they were getting all this funding, but yet we were doing successful. so well, we were, we were so successful with all these yeah. competitions yeah. and we weren't getting any funding out of it and remind or me, recognition. Right. And I, I know what that's like too, being a part of both as well in high school. Yeah. And I couldn't for the life of me when I was doing shows and still playing basketball at the same time, I couldn't for the life of me understand um, why the arts um, even at my high school weren't supported. Right. Yeah. And, and I was, you know, I was doing the arts aside from my school, but um, you know, that, that is a real thing. It's a total, cause you guys had won. Did you win D you won D task? We got first one year. D task. And then we got second at Fullerton in the same year. Yes. And was that junior or senior year? That was my year? senior year. Senior year. Mm -hmm. And you guys did, what show did you guys do for? For D task was Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and, and Clyde. for Fullerton, it was the Scarlet Pimpernel. Yes, that's Very, right. yeah. That ended up pushing, I think, what you guys did for Santa Clarita in that way. I don't think you really may realize just the impact that has had now of recently. Just even doing this um, cabaret show that I just finished mm -hmm. with these kids who are heavily in, in their public schools out here. Now these schools are all, all of our schools are placing top five yeah. in, in D-Task. And that's, you know, the southern section still. Um what what do you what's your opinion on on just like the push push for the arts out here now because i think it's gotten even further since you guys were really pushing for support in the high schools and no yeah. definitely i think in a, a public school sense i feel like there's still a lot of work that needs to be done uh in regards to santa clarita city council them yeah. understanding how important the arts are to the community right. to young adults like us right that you know or it's insane how so many people you and I know are now going to school at either NYU or Marymount. Marymount, or Manhattan. Yeah. All these, yep. you know, famously, you know, just insane musical theater schools. Yeah. And they they were the product of, of Santa Clarita, you know. Product of, even product of escape. Yeah. You know, like the, the co, you know, the collation between um, escape and the public schools even w was a challenge no, because they, they, sure. they both kind of battle back and forth when really I was just telling my mom this today, like when really kids our age were really just trying to get on another show, just get in another show and get more experience. And there was nothing That's personal against experience. it. Yeah. There was nothing personal about those decisions. Like as far as who you have loyalty to, which never made sense to me at all, but you know, between Publix and, and like escape, which is a nonprofit and, um, but it is it is fascinating how things are growing, even just out of the escape program too. Kids who are a part of it, maybe not for the whole their whole no, life. No, for sure. But yeah. But I mean, even when escape has, because they always have around two to three shows every year. Right. Whenever they go to COC, that gives Santa Clarita another opportunity to see these kids shine. Yes. You know, and yes. kids. I'm I'm saying that I'm saying that very loosely. They're they're young right. adults. Right. Um, yes. But absolutely. Ultimately, I mean, for people that have never seen theater. And they come to Escape, which has always been very high in quality when it comes to the actual vocal performances, the scenic design, production the actual value. production value and quality of sure. these shows. Sure. Is it just? I wouldn't say Escape has competition, but it definitely blows some of the other um, yeah. organizations out here out of the water. Right. And that's something I've always appreciated about Escape. Yeah. You know, and it's just a different thing too. I mean, school versus a nonprofit. It's just a different thing. I mean. It, it, CTG yeah. is thrown in the mix there too, Canyon Theater Guild. Yeah. Like because I, um, I you know in a lot of ways Sam Novak, who was doing a lot of shows over there, um, again another person who was just an advocate for the arts, who wanted to be in the arts, and like he's such an inspiration. I know to you too because yeah. you grew up with him. Um, and he's a couple years older than us, but he was just doing shows, and I started realizing like I saw him in um. 39 steps Likewise. there a couple yeah. years ago. I think and we saw that together. Yeah, we did see that together. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember being like, you know, the arts are the arts and theater is theater. Um, and I think CTG even gets a lot of flack for their stuff. And they put out a lot. I mean, to, to be honest, I wonder if they could maybe not do as many shows and really work more time into them. But they do a lot of shows a year. I think the crazy thing about CTG, they're every single person – 
you know, organizational wise and talent wise are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And they have these very, very long seasons yeah. and they're able, they're able to do it, you know? Yeah. And I, I think it's, you know, I've definitely been biased because I've been indoctrinated into the escape mm -hmm. lifestyle, you mm -hmm. know, but CTG, I mean, all theater, in my opinion, is good theater. And yep. anytime I see CTG, I've, it's never been a bad experience. Exactly. And know? they kind of, their, their small little pigeonhole theater is kind of, um, reminds me of almost black box in a sense yeah. because it's so small, but it's kind of cool. I mean, there, I saw forever plaid there, um, a couple years ago as well. And that was kind of a great, just a great day. Yeah. You know, it was like, it's a fun environment. It smells like old lady cream in there, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time. Um, and yeah, I think it's neat to see back to the high school thing. It's neat to see our schools placing. And I attribute a lot of that, the, a compliment to you is I attribute a lot of um, that growth, I think, to what you guys did at Canyon. Because I just remember you being, whether or not you made a huge shake in, in that, I just remember you being s like pushing so hard pushing so hard and kept going and kept going and kept going. And I yeah. think that, I think that woke people up in the administration. I, I don't know how that resolved itself, but I mean, you guys got your own theater, which was amazing. We did. Big yeah. theater. How many seats is that again? It's around, it's around 500. I don't think it's more than 500. It's, but that's no less. It's pretty amazing. It's a beautiful theater. I mean, it's beautiful. It's, yeah. I, I think it's the best one out here. Barry Kemper and I were chatting about how, it might be the best built out of all of the other new ones that are. Being I think built. so because when you look at Valencia's and Valencia West Ranch and Golden Valley have three carbon copy theaters. Right. Hart has its own old school auditorium. Auditorium, which is yeah. <laughs> very beautiful, but very old. Yeah. Um, but then Canyon and Saugus were coming in the mix with these brand new facilities, and Castaic eventually will have their own theater. Right. Right. Um, but. <laughs> The one biggest thing, our loading dock is not obstructed by a cafeteria. You know, mm -hmm. we're able to actually, we have a we have a proper fly system and yeah. we have a full lighting grid and mm -hmm. it's state of the art, fully state of the art. And they they learned from their mistakes in these other these other theater complexes and yeah. made it a full creator space for these students. Right, exactly. And what an opportunity. I mean, it. I think um, specifically you mentioned Canyon and Saugus, but. Um, they've become so Valencia has always been good too, but Canyon and Saugus specifically in the last couple of years have really pushed it with talent. Um, you know, I think, I think about Camden Espino and his time God bless there. Him. Bless. Yeah. Bless <laughs> that man. He was on this show, but he, he didn't get to do a video episode. I think I should have him back for that. But, um, he, he is another, I mean, they made it to Pantages for Jerry Herman. Yeah. I know you, you ended up doing that as well. I don't re were you did you get to perform out there? I can't remember. We you know what? I was not chosen as one of the finalists. Right. Cuz how Jerry Herman worked is uh high schools from all of LA County were able to, you know, audition for Jerry Herman Awards at the Pantages and ultimately judges or adjudicators would come by and they judge your shows personally. Right. And so um I wasn't able to see Fiddler on the Roof. I think yeah, that was that's what, what ended they up. Did. Yeah. yeah. Um but of the two shows that we did, I think it was Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Senior year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we were at the magnitude in terms of just full-scale, you know, right. complexity uh, right. as, as Saugus had their stuff together. You know? Right. Well, and then they were next in line to get their theater, right? And that's yes. that's part of what I mean is two schools that were very deserving got it. And I think a lot of that was because of the student talent over the last totally five agree. years. Yeah. And I mean, people like, I think people like Jimmy Moreno who made, you know, did a lot for those programs even after he graduated. Yeah. Still is college. Yeah. Still is. Um, Art Miller is another one who's done a lot for the program who I don't know personally, but I know him, um, know of him and I've heard he's a wonderful guy. Um, you know, he's actually somebody I would like to eventually have on the show do an interview. Cause I know he's a very interesting guy. Um, People, you know, even people like Waylon at Valencia, who I eventually would love to chat with, is they've all pushed the arts a lot. Mm. And it's clear with the pipeline of kids that are, are going. You know, I mean, before it was like Mandy Gonzalez came out of Saugus, and that's about every, what everybody knew. And now you know? I think she's still in Hamilton. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Well, Derek Klenna came out of here, too, out of Santa Cruz. Still insane. You know? Yeah, it is amazing. It is cool. to It's cool to think for the guys who are in New York. Um, like Jesse, Jesse Pryor and, and Gabby Cario are going 
to New York. They're not going to the same school, but they still get to be with each other. Yeah. That's amazing. You know, it's, it's, it's fascinating. But now let's get into, um, let's get into the college program okay. over at Disney. Um, I wanted to read their, um, their kind of summation of the program. And it's, and it says as a Disney college program participant, you'll become part of the magic that is known worldwide, gain value on the job experience, working in our parks and resorts, participate in college coursework and have the opportunity to meet and live with people from all over the country and potentially the world in company sponsored housing. This truly unique five to seven month program allows participants to network with leaders take part in personal and career development classes and build transferable skills such as problem solving, teamwork, guest service, and effective communication. Um, It sounds like a wonderful program to me. Like it, it just seems like such a neat experience to be able to somehow take college, get college credit intern and work all at the same time Mm -hmm. and get, get money. You know, I, I, to me, that's, that's so neat, but I wanted to, you know, start that off with just defining what the program is and then just asking you, what your experience was top to bottom. I know the application process was probably tough for that. And we could start Very with tough. that. Yeah. Yeah. No, the application process. So I'll just give you some numbers. Yeah. Walt Disney world, they accept about 8,000 individuals from all over the world um, right. to Walt Disney world, mm-hmm. Anaheim. They accept about maybe 600 people. And I'm being generous there. It's a smaller resort. Mm-hmm. Walt Disney world has about four different theme parks with two water parks and a, you know, a wazoo of different resorts that you can stay at. You know? So there are so many locations and opportunities at Walt Disney World that yeah. Disneyland here in California just doesn't have. Right. Um, they have land. <laughs> they have they plenty have, of land. They, they have don't plenty have, of land. They don't have Hollywood. Anaheim and, yeah. is stuck in a is stuck in a drought with a bunch of you know yeah. a bunch of mountains aside from it. But ultimately, yeah. I knew applying for the college program it was going to be difficult. And when I first applied for it, I did not know too much about the college program other than there was an opportunity at Disneyland. Yeah. And at the time I said, Oh, you know, I can, I could, I could just go over to Disneyland. I'd be close to home. I can yeah. still take college classes. And yeah. I applied and immediately was denied, you know? And I, I was like, okay, well, well shoot. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was unexpected, you know? Right, and right. I, I wasn't trying to, you know, get on a high horse or anything, but I was like, Oh, oh I'm a little insulted. You know, yeah, I'm from yeah. California. Right. Um, but ultimately the, the next term came out and, I decided to look more into the program, mm-hmm. uh, and ultimately, I decided I, I was comfortable with moving to Orlando. Yeah, which didn't cross my mind hmm. a few months prior to that. Right, and you had been at, at College of the Canyons before yeah. that. Doing I was a little at like ed. I was at like Pasadena City College and College of the Canyons. It was kind That's of that's right. You're at PCC for a yeah. while. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Keep going. Sorry. But anyways, no, you're that. fine. You're yeah. fine. Anyways, I mean, I decided to apply, mm-hmm. and. I had when did you apply by the way because you got you went there in January so when did you have to apply was it like a year in advance or I applied in August of 2017 okay Okay. and so here's how the application process worked you are given a whole list of different opportunities that you would like to work in at Disney World and you choose your top five right so I think I I think what I ended up choosing as my top five was children's activities attractions photo pass photography Mm -hmm. front desk and I think watercraft just cool. it, it all sounded interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. And about a week goes by after applying and immediately I got an interview and I said, mm-hmm. Oh, this is great. You know? Yeah. So I have a, I have an online interview first. It was kind of just a questionnaire. Mm-hmm. I passed that. So then I said, okay, let's go to schedule your phone interview. So the phone interview is about a few days later. Uh, it was about a 30 minute conversation and she was mainly just asking like, Oh, well, have you ever lived? Have you ever lived with roommates? And I said, yeah. no. No. You know, <laughs> I've, you know, I've, I've lived, I've lived I've here lived in my home. hometown my entire life. And I have she's one like, okay. sister. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm like, I I've, have, yeah. if you're asking if, you know, if there's going to be any relationship issues between me and my roommates, I have a younger sister. We, we get along just fine. Yeah. Um, but ultimately I was, she, eventually she came to the question, you know, like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Sure. And I said, you know what? I want something spiel heavy. She's like, oh yeah. I'm like, yeah, I want something, you know, I want, I want an opportunity where I can still make the magic with guests. Yeah. But also be funny. You know, right. I wanted to I wanted to use my comedic chops. That was what yeah. I was trying to get to her. And I yeah. finally, finally was just like, I want to be a jungle cruise skipper. And then she yeah. said she's like, Oh, okay, okay. So you just want to spiel, you wanna have fun, you wanna be funny. I'm like, Yeah, yeah, that sounds yeah. awesome. And so a few days go by and I I was really depressed around this time. I don't yeah. remember what it was, but I think there were certain personal issues in my life and I was without a job at that moment and 
Hamilton was in town, and trust me, this is important to the story. <laughs> Hamilton was in town, and I was upset because there were all these people going to Hamilton. I couldn't see Hamilton. <laughs> And so, within, like, a span of three days... I was days, one of those. I'm yeah. sorry. I went... Did I tell you I... I really quick, I ended up... I got back from... Because I was in Italy for six months uh-huh. abroad. Or six months. Six weeks. Um, and I got back. And it, and it was, like, literally the day or two after I got back. And I could... I booked a wedding, like, a, to do a job for a wedding. For yeah. A film. And um, on the day I was supposed to see it in October. Oh, and no. I was like, I was like, oh, my God. I, I like, how... I, I want to see it. I want to see it, you know, like, and I looked and they had tickets for, um, for, I think opening, it was opening night of previews and I got a ticket and cause oh I had all gosh. this leftover spending money from Italy. I never spent any money there and I, cause all the food and stuff was provided already. Um, and I was like, well, shoot, I'm going to use my spending money, go buy a ticket. I got, I think it was like a $300 ticket back of the mezzanine very back like yeah. literally second to last row in the back and i still was like shocked oh yeah dumb, you know dumb yeah, 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 yeah it was like you know the amount of energy in there was nuts but anyway i i now that you said that i had to get that out of my trust system, me trust you know? me this it was amazing this will still come into play ultimately what happened in the two day span i found out i made it in the disney college program not as a jungle cruise skipper but in recreation attractions which i'll was get it more good or bad uh initially, initially initially i was i was a little i just didn't know what it was right, you know right, so right. i'll get into that okay. in a second okay uh but then the very <laughs> next day i got an email saying you won the hamilton lottery oh and i was like oh my goodness you know i was the depression just immediately faded away i had a job him. in the future yeah. i got tickets to hamilton that weekend wow. and so uh yeah it was two ten dollar tickets uh first row center orchestra it was phenomenal absolutely phenomenal <laughs> It was out of pure luck. I'm I, shocked. I'm, I'm sorry. That's wow. <laughs> it, I was praying so first hard. First row center orchestra. Yeah. They really give you priority for him. Yeah. Like hand for him. You wouldn't imagine. The people around me, I, I was asking, not out of disrespect, but I was just asking, like, how much did you spend on your ticket? And they said, oh, around 800. <gasps> well, I was like, I just spent $20. If I, <laughs> yeah. If I spent 300 for back of mezzanine, I'm sure. They were prime yeah, seating. Prime, and I prime, uh, yeah. ended up taking my sister and she had no idea I was going to take her. But wow. aside from that, this wow. is important because it yeah, was yeah, in yeah. that weekend I realized, wow, okay, things are starting to go well. I got a job with Disney. Yep. I'm going to Hamilton. Yep. And things are looking up. You sure. know? Mm-hmm. And so I looked more into recreation attractions. Mm-hmm. Um, and the issue was not a lot of people had recreation attractions as their role. I didn't even know where my work location would be. I was like, well... You know, the only thing I can find was maybe working out on the marina sometimes, helping out with boats or towels or, you know, maybe being a pool boy or something. Yeah. I couldn't come up with anything. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, I was accepted in the program. Sure. And at this time, that's when you start joining all the Facebook pages. There are thousands and thousands of people, you know, wow. hopeful college program participants on these Facebook pages. But then if they were accepted, use that as an opportunity to try to find your roommates. Sure, sure. And... I think the issue was that the guy to girl ratio on the college program, I'd say there was maybe like, there was maybe 15 girls per one guy. Wow. It was, it was insane. Like, wow. I'm not complaining by all means, but it was, it was to the point where you could not find a roommate, you know? Yeah. So I came to the conclusion later on around, uh, I want to say maybe. I want to say in October, I kind of just gave up on finding roommates and I was just going to go random. But here was the, here was the culture that I kind of realized a lot of people were, they were trying to find roommates yeah. and they were coming up with these long drawn out, like personality quizzes essentially, which in theory, you know, it gives you a general idea of that yeah. person. Much like college. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Much like applying. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And you know, Interesting. all of a sudden people were linking up and they had all of their roommates ready. Yeah. And I think... The issue was a lot of people on the on the college program at that time, they were vlogging, they were documenting all their time at the college program, and they were making it out to be the most magical experience of your entire life, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I think the issue with all the applicants is they just assumed you wouldn't be working all the time, you know? <laughs> they assumed yeah. that yeah, yeah, you would yeah. just be able to have a magical experience and you'd be able to go to the parks whenever you wanted to, mm. and you'd be able to... You'd be able to meet all the characters. You'd be able to have all the character dinners and nice, mm-hmm. you know, just the full Disney vacation. And thought they, I think they had it in their head that it was just going to be a five-month Disney vacation. Right. Which 
I think when the program started, they were it was a rude awakening. Mm. For me, I I knew what I was getting myself into. I knew it was a job. I was just gonna say, I mean, it's like right on the website. If you watch like the um the videos that preface Mm -hmm. what is about to happen, like I just watched them blindly today, and I was like, oh, I could see this being actually, you know, they made it. They talked it up. Obviously, Disney does that. Obviously, yeah. And it to their credit, things do turn out pretty close to what they say Mm -hmm. um but i even watched it blindly and i'm like oh this is gonna be a lot of work because you know you're if you have you know if you have a class or two and you're working um, you're working at the busiest place on earth is it really would would you consider florida disney florida it's a tourist hub yeah Um, you have people from all over the world that visit orlando and um no easily accessible at this yeah, yeah at this time of at this time of our lives there will not be a single day where Disney will be more busy or less crowded than any other day of the year. Every huh. single day is busy. In the summer is, is every summer. <sighs> right now it's brutal. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. You're glad to be out of there, I'm sure. I'm sh- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, but ultimately the interview process and the actual application process, it was it was a little stressful, you know, and not ha- not knowing who your roommates were going to be and choosing there were four different apartment complexes to choose from which there was Vista Way, which I ended up choosing that one because of the cheapest and the oldest. Mm. I didn't care. Yeah. The other three were fairly new, and they had in you know in unit washer and dryer units, mm-hmm. and they had all these other just nicer amenities. Yeah. But I knew very early on that I wanted something cheap, and I just need something to sleep in. Yeah. And cook food. That was right. it. I mean, that's... you know, once we started actually, you know, be in our jobs and be out Mm. half the time we weren't even in our apartments you know sure um so ultimately i'd say by the time we arrived i was happy with my living situation and i was in an apartment with six people that i had never met before and it was i do not regret that decision wonderful yeah completely random and yeah they all turned out to be awesome and they all had some sort of musical background and so oh did they really it was a complete coincidence wow well i guess i guess you could get that with people coming, coming the Disney. to Disney, yeah, 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 with all of their, you know, with all of their background. Um, so I want to talk about now that we've talked about like kind of the application you getting there. Um, you said you mentioned to me you took one class yeah. there, um, and it, their mantra is like "live, learn, earn." And I know that sounds like that sounds so cheese. That it's, sounds Disney. It is. That sounds very Disney. It's total cheese ball. Um, but what was what was the class you took, and did you find it beneficial? And you and before we start that, you did get units for that, right? Did it count as units or no? You know what? That's the question. I was at COC, and I, they, ultimately, what happened is I explained to them the credibility of mm-hmm. the college program mm-hmm. and how valuable it would be working hands on with Disney. Yeah. And they they kind of just gave me the middle finger and said, you know, good luck. You know, really, they did like not. They, they, they did not support me at all yeah. uh, in that endeavor. So it wasn't a big deal. The only class I ended up taking turned out to be more or less like a seminar, mm-hmm. entertainment show production. Uh, so that sounds interesting. What it entailed is we were able to have seminars with all of the entertainment leaders at Disney World. Mm. So these would be stage managers you know behind the scenes of phantasmic and our huge fireworks show that we had and Mm -hmm. all of our other stage shows that we had or we'd have you know the imagineers that came in and and conceptualized these kind of shows and wow came up with the ideas and the the logistical aspects i'm sure financial aspects i'm sure right away that was pretty cool though oh it was it was a phenomenal experience Yeah. yeah right and there were even opportunities that the the most important opportunity that i had on the entire program we got to tour phantasmic and Fantasmic has been at Hollywood Studios in Orlando yeah. since the 80s. It's yes. A, it's a very yeah. old show. Yeah. That one hasn't updated much, but the one here in Anaheim has recently updated. I hope yeah. that one can get the update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw um, part of that yeah, when was I was there recently. Phenomenal. Yeah. But mm-hmm. ultimately, uh, we got to tour Fantasmic, and we went behind the scenes of the costume facility, the, wow. you know, the, the pyrotechnic facility. We went in this version of Fantasmic. It's not on Tom Sawyer's Island. It's in its own little, I guess stadium area but then in the right there's this big moat and there's a huge mountain right in the middle and that's where maleficent lives oh that's so neat. we got to scale this I've, huge I've mountain. pictures of that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's amazing it we looks got to amazing. scale this huge mountain and you know we just got to learn all the ins and outs of how they're able to run mm-hmm. this show sometimes mm-hmm. twice a night for 
ever. You know, they've been doing wow. it since the eighties and they're still improving upon it. You know, the story isn't over yet. You know? Yeah. I can imagine the pyrotechnic aspect of it is nuts because how do you, gosh, can you imagine how much money did they mention how much money in pyrotechnics that oh. Disney spends? Uh, Cause I it's mean, a lot. They think do of fireworks it this way. and everything. I mean, I can't give out the exact numbers, but ultimately they buy fireworks for all the, all the theme parks for that one day. And that's in the millions for that one day. You know, I feel eventually they might phase out the fireworks or something that's not as expensive. Yeah, because they they do daily fireworks even at um, Orlando. Just any is every it at any one place or is it like at every different park? They the do four parks have their own night work spectac or nighttime spectacular. Wow. So Magic Kingdom have had a happily ever after. Animal Kingdom had Rivers of Light. Epcot had Illuminations, and then Hollywood Studios had two. There was the Star Wars Galactic Spectacular, and then there was Fantasmic, which was their main wow. main show. But that just kind of that just from a from that perspective, you get an idea of how big. I mean, you think of the entertainment, like the film business side of yeah. Disney, it's massive. But you don't have any idea like how much the parks generate, and and that to me, I think, is interesting that you mentioned that Florida's the you know the Orlando. Disney Orlando is like huge, yeah. massive, like having different, multiple different parks. It's like probably dropping Disneyland itself in California, like four different times or more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that must've been crazy. It was its own city. Yeah. And around nine o'clock every night, it would be really pretty. I'd be up at my, my water park stand way up above all the trees. And at nine o'clock every single night, always around like nine o'clock or nine fifteen, That was when all the fireworks started. So, from every park yeah from my it. little from my little yeah. uh, hut essentially i'd watch off in the distance all these fireworks just spring up but uh going back to the phantasmic thing there were so many things that i unfortunately just can't talk about on the show mm -hmm. but they i will never ever forget some of the opportunities they were able to give me it just oh. in that that the few hours I was able to talk to the stage techs and the manager yeah. and yeah. Uh, some of the, some of even the actors and the costume designers and you know mm -hmm. it was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal experience. I some of the other classes that Disney has to offer would mm -hmm. be uh, they have like a human resources class. Oh, that's kind of neat. You know, that they might have, be valuable for you to for somebody to have in general. Yeah, no, definitely. And learning from Disney. Disney PR and, and all that stuff. Oh, must be, for sure. Must be the top because of how much they have to deal with. Oh, for yeah. sure. They yeah. had an HR class. They had a Disney heritage class. So you learn about the history of Disney. They had, you know, an engineering class if you wanted to eventually work for Imagineering. Wow. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. So wow. it was very diverse. I had some of my roommates. They were working. They were working their full time job. They might have been taking one or two classes through Disney and then they were still taking classes from their college, their respected college. Oh, like you online. Know, or whatever. Online or... Or if they were local or whatever. Yeah. I had a friend, he actually drove about, eh, it was about 20 minutes away to the nearest community college. He was able to just transfer those credits to his, his four year. Wow. You know, but people That's did it. I decided That's pretty to just... fascinating that, I mean, in theory, like before we get into some of the negatives, like in theory, that is pretty am amazing. Like there's a guy on, there's a guy in the video who of course is, is toting it as like the best college program there is. Cause it, it could be in the grand scale. That's pretty incredible that you can do something like that at a theme park with the biggest corporation in the world. I oh, mean, there's sure. no doubt that Disney is, um, but let's go kind of now into where you worked in the park and what you did and, and kind of maybe even your daily routine just cause yeah, sure. you know, you were there for, so you were there for six months, I was right? There for six months. Yeah. There's that, that, that to me blows me away. That it was six six months. It was of six you months. Being gone. I think the craziest thing was Hurricane Irma happened. I want to say last August, mm -hmm. around that time. It was around summertime. I remember right her fall time. Yeah, and Disney was still recovering from the aftermath of Hurricane mm -hmm. Irma. It wasn't as bad as say Katrina or any of the other hurricanes, but yeah. it it affected operations. Did it rough up the park? It did. Yeah. The what ended up happening though was Typhoon Lagoon, which is. Uh, Disney water park yeah. that ended up being closed for refurbishment longer than anticipated because yeah. of all of the infrastructural needs that they needed to fix. Yeah. You know, so from right. January until March, they were just, they had me at two different locations. So the first one being ESPN wide world of sports. Yeah. I remember seeing your post. Oh when I started my there. gosh. I, 
Can you believe they own? I can't believe ESPN. Disney owns e- I mean, Disney owns everything. Oh yeah. But ESPN Wide World of Sports was the bane of my existence. Mm. I hated ESPN. Did you Did you work in the radio, like in the radio station? No. Like, so because I know they have like a they have like that cat. You know, like in um, they had a full Disney. broadcasting center. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had a full bro- broadcasting center, but ultimately this sports complex, it was just to give you an idea of how big this thing was. It was as large. It was the largest human inhabited Disney property of all the other Disney properties in the world. Wow. So Animal Kingdom is technically the largest theme park, but if you took out the safari, it's nothing. ESPN, because there are so many soccer fields and stadiums and arenas that were all compact wow. in this one area, it was a huge complex. But had, is there any is there any like professional teams that play there? Or is yeah, it just... yeah. So um, the Atlanta Braves, they had their spring training at our baseball stadium. Wow. So, But it's just, what I'm saying is it's all just there for for use right because yeah. every, they all have their respective places in in like you know miami heat or orlando magic yeah or they all have their own places so mm-hmm. they just yes that espn place espn just has them. was used for it was an olympians playground um, a lot of olympic athletes would come to espn as their training facility the atlanta braves as i mentioned used that as their spring training facility wow. and on top of that varsity cheer that was where they would have their large like cheer summit every single year that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And by all means, I saw, you know, some of the most talented, you know, talented individuals I have ever seen in my entire just life. Out Especially there when like the, yeah. the gymnastic gymnastic folks that would come in, and yeah. you're just like, I how do you bend like that? You know? Right, right. Um <laughs> you know, it was just yeah. it was crazy to wrap your head and see you you kind of put yourself in the perspective. You see you kind of just standing there telling yeah. guests, you know, where the nearest restroom is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you'd be watching these kids who they're only like 10 or 11 sometimes and they're just they're doing all these insane just absolutely you know crazy things to their body right you know it was it was insane espn though what i was doing over there was guest operations so ultimately what that entailed was ushering in the actual event facilities telling people you know what aisle they needed to be at or where the nearest restroom was yeah that wasn't too fun right uh parking which that was directing Uber drivers to the drop off areas and wow. making sure, you know, it was just a whole dilemma because people, our parking situation was just bad. Yeah. Um, and then I was also working courtesy carts, which was pretty much, they gave me my own golf cart. I got to drive, you know, very important visual individuals around yeah. the park or around yeah. the property. Yeah. And that was, that was probably my favorite aspect of ESPN. There was also park entry where I was literally just scanning tickets. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> yeah. but courtesy cart, that was when I was able to make most of my magic. You know, I was able to have a one-on-one conversation for at least, at least a minute. You know, the issue with ushering and any, any of those other positions, They're short term, very, very short, you know, it's very right. quick. They have a very, they know exactly the question they need. You give them that answer and that's it. You know, mm-hmm. they just walk away. Mm-hmm. I think the issue with ESPN though, was literally the people that came through. By all means, very talented, and it was always the athletes that were very, very charming and sweet. Yeah, is the parents, the uh, parents. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, they would crazy. I can't tell you how many vacations I ruined, quote unquote ruined, because you know I was I made them late for their mm. daughter's cheer competition or oh wow, you know, and the, uh, to add matters to that, ESPN was one of the only complexes based off of MLB regulations for because of the Braves, yeah. where you can drink up to the seventh inning. Whereas everywhere else, all the other Disney resorts, you are allowed to have two drinks per stand. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, and the thing too is if we unwrap everything that I'm sure you experienced, we'd be here for hours. Because that, I mean, just alone, with you just alone saying how big ESPN is and how much was happening at ESPN, that's only what, what, would you say that's like 10, maybe 10% of the park? What percent of, of the park is like not the size but like does you know espn occupy because there's you have all the theme the theme parks it's hard to give you a percentage on that yeah because is is that's that's in the downtown little area or is it not it's weird disney world i'd say from the actual downtown orlando area is about maybe i want to say maybe about 30 minutes away hmm yeah, and yeah. obviously there's just a lot of traffic, but but that's ESPN, that's what you mean by a city is it could have like we were talking it could be like the Vatican in Rome like Vatican City yeah. because it's it it they own so much property that they could they were trying to get it to be their own 
system that they could govern, yeah. which they basically do already because they own everything. But I can imagine that being um, part of the entire equation. Like, mm -hmm. Orlando's occupied by Disney. For sure. Right? And aside from ESPN, even though I hated every second of it, occasionally they'd have me go over to Magic Kingdom mm -hmm. and I'd be working on Main Street and I'd literally just be... After the big fireworks show would happen, yeah, I would be pointing people where they needed to go, yeah. and I'd be picking up trash off Main Street and handing out stickers, and mm -hmm. I'd have a big Mickey hand and I'd wave goodbye, you know, tell yeah. people to drive safe. Yeah. Um, but it was until March where Typhoon Lagoon finally reopened, and when I finally got that that notification, I was just, I just was so, so enthusiastic. And, yeah. and that's their water park for anybody who doesn't know yes. what what that is. That's their water park. Um, and again, preface this before you go into it what's the size because we have hurricane harbor but what's the size of this place because you were telling me it's massive i'd say typhoon lagoon is probably the size of college of the canyons college of the canyons or even i'd say half the size of magic mountain what's the acreage acreage it was about it's I it's a, say it was, i want to say it was about 20 acres that's huge yeah that's huge for a water park, it was huge you know amazing that's amazing Cause in, size. in the grand like magic kingdom i think was around 80 yeah. 80 or so acres but you know that's, but for a water park for a water park it was huge because they're just slides you know you don't need as much of a footprint to yeah. put down these slides and then you, know? you were you were telling me too they had the biggest um wave pool ever largest wave pool in the country i'm yeah. sure there's a few other ones in the world that are a oh bit sure larger. sure yeah um, but in the no country doubt. i know for sure you can actually you can surf an actual wave on this wave pool right you were telling yeah. telling me you can program and guys actually come and surf their perfect yeah. wave and get good at it yeah wow that's phenomenal that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And then you occupied your time there for then the remaining four months. I was there correct? from March until July 26th. That was July 24th was technically my last day. Wow. Um, but from there, I was working in slide operations, was literally just pushing people down slides, you know. <laughs> and that one was a lot of fun because most of the time they give me a microphone and it was my own little jungle cruise, you know, I was able yeah. to joke. So around you with did, the guests you, and... you did get to have a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah I know, know it wasn't a hundred percent what you wanted. But yeah. It... Is anything really like, do you really get what you want? Do you really get what exactly. the program gives you? Not all the time. You have to find what's best for you in that experience. Exactly. Right? So I was yeah. working in slide operations Yeah. and that in itself was incredibly valuable, but yeah. then they decided to give me a children's activity mm. responsibility. So yeah. spontaneously throughout the day, I Which just, is what you asked for, by the way. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, I mean, yeah. it it wasn't an official, official like, children's activity role, right. but my job for that day was to literally just play play with the kids. Wow. Have, you know, spontaneous dance parties with the kids, hand out prizes. Spontaneous dance parties. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was going yeah. crazy at the Jones Brothers and High School Musical, <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like, it was, yeah, just, yeah. It was just pure fun, you know? Yeah. Um, That's so funny. I, I cannot stress to you how much I enjoyed my time over at Typhoon. That's wonderful. Yeah. So that made the program for you, no doubt. Like, no doubt. And now, you don't have to go into this too much, just a yes or no, but did, were you still taking that class during, like throughout the entire six months, or was it only part? The class only lasted about, it started in February and ended in April. Okay. So yeah. that was only part of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what was your kind of, what was your, I guess we could just kind of keep going a little bit. I, I want to start kind of getting toward wrapping up, but... Um, overall, like, what did you, what did you take away from from the entire experience? Because I know you just said you really enjoyed the water park yeah. aspect of it, and I was telling you earlier, huh, Florida has a three o'clock rainstorm every single day, mm -hmm. and there would be a lot of guests that you know they spend thousands and thousands of dollars to come to Disney, and have right? Because perfect... they fl they have their whole fa family vacation, yeah. They fly out, yeah. And they they that. plan months in ahead. They don't know what the weather's going to be like, right? But ultimately, what would happen is, you know, they spend all this money to come down here, and it starts raining you know, the day they need to come. And because we're a water park, we have to close down if there's lightning in a six mile radius. Yeah. We don't it's want like, you to get electrocuted. Like, we want to go in the water. Well, do you want to die? Do you want to die? <laughs> yeah. And so we had to constantly oh just like regurgitate this information. Just be yeah. like, you know, hey, exactly. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. You know, once the lightning passes a six mile radius, we'll go and open things back up for you. And there were some guests that were very, very upset, understandably upset. And right. at that point, you know, you just kind of, you just kind of nod your head and you just say, like, you know, if there's anything else we can do, please feel free to just yeah. come back to us. Yeah, but sorry. if you have any further yeah. questions, I would encourage you to just go up to guest right. relations. Right. Um, but going back to that, there would be guests that I'd have to tell them there's a silver lining. 
because most of the time Typhoon Lagoon was always busy because it was hot all the time in Florida and on a busy day Typhoon had around 10,000 people mm. that's a busy day okay mm. the nice thing though is when we had these storm closures even if it was only for 30 minutes you'd expect about and you'd expect about a thousand or two thousand to leave that park yeah and so i was like hey think of it this way i know it's inconvenient go and just you know just relax for a little bit get some shade or drink some water the nice thing is that most of the lines are gonna be way shorter mm. you know mm. and it was from there i was able to have right because it scares people off it scares then, people yeah. off you yeah. know yeah. it was from there though i was able to have just full-on personable conversations with each wonderful and, you know, and I was able to meet people from all over the world, yeah. Ireland, UK, Thailand, Australia. Who, yeah, who fly out. Yeah, to, you yeah. know. and Well, because Paris Disney is nothing close to, you know. Yeah. US Disney is amazing. Just both both the locations. Yeah. But, you know, I was able to take those storm closure opportunities to interact with guests. And that was, those were the kind of moments I cherished. You know, just being mm-hmm. able to interact with their children, obviously. Mm-hmm. Kind of learn, you know, what they were looking for on this vacation. If they had anything, if they had needed any recommendations. Yeah. You know, because I knew the place top to bottom. Yeah. It. I was I, at that point. I was being selfish yeah. to have all of the you know the, the nice restaurants stuck in my head and not yeah. share you know yeah. all the those good opportunities. So right, I well, think with great. you know with small opportunities like that where I just got yeah. to sit down with the guests and talk to them, you right. know, figure out just who they are, you know, right. and they were able to learn a little bit about me in that process. It was it was uh it was very valuable, you know. Which is that, and that's what you pay the money for in any situation, right? You yeah. pay money to be able to actually experience something right and and i and i feel like that is probably what they mean um when they say that it's an unforgettable experience right yes. they want you i mean but like like i just said a minute ago you any experience that you are a part of there's always a downer and you have to just get by it because nothing's perfect everything is going to be flawed in some way yeah so um even disney which they have the money to make everything great for the most part but maybe in a bigger corporation it's it's sometimes easier to see flaws because they have so many little flaws that become amplified but that is wonderful that you you know were able to be a part of that would you recommend it is what i was going to say would you the recommend as a whole yeah as a whole would you recommend cuz you only got to experience two of probably the many different areas that you could be placed in For like sure. you could even go back again i'm sure and do a different oh, different things i think if you go in with the mindset that it's going to be a, a Disney vacation mm-hmm. for all five to seven months that you're there. You're in for a very, very rude awakening. You're right. you're working over 45 hours a week. You're working. You, you got to take these classes. You still need to take care of yourself in terms of groceries and, you know, anything else that you can possibly think of. If you don't wow, have a 45 car. 45 hours. That's pretty. That's, amazing. I mean, that was like, a, uh, that was a, a regular week. Occasionally it would go up to like 55, wow. even 60, you know. Those were around like Labor Day or not Labor Day week, Memorial Day week and the Fourth of July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you go into the mindset though that you're 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 only going to be you know working at the most magical place on earth, and you kind of just disregard all the other responsibilities, mm. it's a job. Mm. It's it is a very very physically and emotionally demanding job. Mm. Would I do it again? Yes, in a heartbeat because right. I knew what I, I knew exactly what I was right. getting myself into. But right. if you have this, if you have it built up in your head that it's going to be perfect at every single little second, just like you're a guest and you're spending all this money mm. on these vacations, don't. Yeah. You know, right. I, I wouldn't recommend it if the only thing on your mind is to just go to the parks and have fun, mm. you know, because we were able to go to for free. Yeah. That was one of our, our biggest perks. Yeah. And I knew a lot of people that ended up self terming or right. terminating themselves from the company because. They just couldn't. They, couldn't, yeah. they didn't want to work. They yeah. just, they either called out enough for Disney to finally terminate them, or they just said, you know what, this wasn't what I was expecting. Exactly. You know. Right. Right. Well, that's that's really kind of cool to hear. I mean, that's that's a big part of you know our young lives as young adults. You know, six months seems like a long time. You know, and yeah. it is. It really is. But I think you know like with our parents too, as, as they get older, they're like, Oh, that goes by fast. Right. But younger, as we're younger, it's cool to experience big things like that, that take time to, um, to understand, like, I'm sure you feel like you've grown a lot Yeah. where, you know, in the, in that you were just saying full working hours and, you know, classes and taking care of yourself, um, and all that stuff. I know I felt a lot that way in Italy, 
um, when I was over in Italy, going abroad, that changed a lot for me because in a similar way, I'd say you're I, away I, from comfort. Yeah. yeah. I'd say I've grown more in the past six months than I have in my entire life. Yep. Yeah. I would say that I'd say the same in yeah. the last year because I would have gotten right back from Italy. And this last year, even here has been crazy. Um, these are transformative years, right? I mean, yeah. and I normally kind of end, um, end the show by kind of saying where you see yourself in, in the next five years, funny enough, because we were just chatting about that. But, um, you know, with, with this college program, um, with Disney too, I wanted to mention, um, does it prepare you? to be able to get a job with Disney. Yes. Now, is it, it seems like it's generally almost a hundred percent for anybody who's been involved in it, which is kind of crazy to say, but they're mm-hmm. so huge that they have thousands of jobs. Um, and I wanted you to kind of go into, into that, like with your next five years, like what, what's next your plan? Um, and, and also just how does, how did it prepare you or how does it connect you? Cause you know, the connection's big. How does mm-hmm. it connect you into further Disney? No, for sure. I think the, the big takeaway, obviously once you're, and this is, this is a personal opinion. Yeah. Once I realized I was officially employed by the Walt Disney company. Mm-hmm. And as long as I didn't have any reprimands or, um, just any, any issues, I guess, with my actual job performance, yeah. there would be a good likelihood that I can probably, you know, eventually work for the Walt Disney Company again yeah. in the future, you know? Right. And so ultimately, I live right down the street from Disneyland, you know, it's about 60 miles away, but it's it's right down the street, mm. and that's an opportunity, you yeah. know? Yeah. I can go to school right down the street over at Fullerton. Mm-hmm. I can take classes. I can finish out my bachelor's mm-hmm. and I can work at Disneyland, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think it's important, obviously when you, if you end up, you know, doing the college program, yeah. um, really take advantage of the actual guest recovery moments. Um, Cause that was something I, I, I wouldn't say I was, I wouldn't say it was non-confrontational before mm-hmm. my college mm-hmm. program, but it definitely, it definitely, t- it, it taught me how to effectively communicate with guests so they don't hmm. get more upset. It, you know, you try to mediate wow. the situation, you try to diffuse things. That's kind know. of fascinating um, to me because that's literally like I've always thought we think similarly, you know, because we we're both very. Um, driven you know in general we've always been that way i think but um that's something i've honestly that what you just said is what i've also been dealing with a lot is confrontation learning what that's like in in a way where you don't hurt somebody you know even if you have a disagreement you know there's a way to move on from that i know you're talking guest relation but that applies for anything in the same way there is still a big um there's a lot to be said for that. I think it's such a valuable and huge part of life, no doubt, because you, you need to learn that, you know, you need to learn to deal with any kind of person, right? You need to learn to resolve issues. Yes. Like the whole confrontation thing that you just mentioned that to me, that has been a huge staple of what I've been learning the last 12 months, even six months, four months. I mean, I learned a lot of that from even my show that Mm -hmm. I just finished up. So, um, but yeah, I wanted you to also kind of to go into what your ideas were for, for future as well. So like starting after Fullerton, hopefully working at Disney, right? Just through your connection. Yeah. And then where does that magic kind of continue for you? Cause I know you're so big into the arts and you have, you've already mentioned what you would like. You know what? I think the arts will forever be a huge part of my life. I think theater will forever be a huge part of my life. Mm. Ideally. Hard to get rid of the bug. It's. It I don't is, think you can. It's honest. like Ebola, man. Yeah. It's never going away, man. <laughs> it's never going away. Ebola. Yeah. It is. No, for real. Oh, it, it's it's a good tick though. I, I love theater. Yeah. Ultimately though, I'd like to stay active in the arts community. I'd like to stay active in the. I like to stay active in communities. If there are communities that I realize are lacking in arts diversity. Yeah. Um, I'd like to go in there, mm. and as an arts administrator. You know, eventually, I'd like to just be able to to be able to just turn things around and just move on to the next city. Mm. You know, I just think Harold Hill is, if you will, yeah, in a weird way, yeah, but not <laughs> not in a fraudulent way. Right, right. <laughs> um, 
<sighs> but ultimately, you know, I, I just, I think it's important for especially lower income communities to mm. have these kind of resources available mm-hmm. to them mm-hmm. so that they're, they're not out there doing bad things. You know, yeah. Yeah. they're, we could be using graffiti artists and we can be, t- we can turn those people into artists. You know, yeah. I've seen some of the graffiti art here in Santa Clarita and it's absolutely spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> I go into the wash True. and it's just, it's some of it's, it's just very beautiful. Yeah. And they're getting themselves involved with trouble. You yeah. know, yeah. if you have a safe space mm. in those kind of communities, you don't have to worry about any of that. It's a right. safe environment for them to just literally do whatever they want, you yeah, know, to express themselves. Exactly. And yeah. I, I hope and I pray that, you know, access to the arts will never, ever be exclusive to any one, you know, race, sexuality, mm-hmm. ethnicity, religion, mm-hmm. political preference. I, it's, it's a free form. It is. I mean, to yeah. be honest, I was just thinking about how that is. It's such a free form. Um, art is not, art is not bound um, like business. Art is not bound by um by really anything yeah and i think it should be like that because if you if you do try to put a limit on it then where are you gonna be, you know where, where is it gonna be yeah. it's not supposed to be so yeah keep going into that no i i just because you again mention your major real fast like what your your oh, end man. goal is i'm majoring in arts administration right with an emphasis in musical theater and a minor in recreation and tourism the minor i just added because i had such a great time at typhoon yeah i was just gonna uh-huh. say it sounded like something that you would have added yeah. it was not in my mindset initially but i realized right. how much i liked the yeah. actual organizational aspect and the actual guest interaction yeah in tourism yeah that i was it you know it was an itch right you know well then in, in closing just mention your idea the ymca kind of like idea real real fast yeah i think like uh, you said you were kind of already saying it no but. i think eventually we should have community art spaces in every single major city mm. and eventually we can expand those out to smaller you know yeah. suburban cities that aren't getting these kind of opportunities yeah to express themselves whether it be in disciplines that their public schools aren't teaching them, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. with theater here in Santa Clarita, most of the time it's only about performance art when yeah. really there's a whole other art behind the scenes when it comes to costume design and scenic yeah. design and lighting design and sound design. The list goes on, you know, mm. and that's not even just theater. That that applies for all disciplines of art, right? you know. I think having the opportunities available for them will not only better their social well-being at that age, but it will prepare them for the future you know Mm -hmm. eventually when they have these job opportunities that come up they're not gonna be left in the dark because they were just a a an actor and i'm not bashing actors they're following their passion you know and i was an actor too and i I would still consider myself one yeah but there needs to be a balance you know they Mm. especially in public schools it can't just be acting you know right there are all these other instruments in order for it to to make a full orchestra you know exactly well evan Thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate. Um, I really appreciate just just everything that you're doing. Um, and this show is really solely based on creators and um, and people that inspire me and have inspired me or who are on the same wavelength. So thank you for being a part of it. Thanks for sharing about the program because it's really neat. Yeah, no problem. Um, we are gonna have more episodes coming up this this week um we're about a week ahead so there's some exciting guests coming um and some really good stuff make sure you follow us over on instagram and facebook at one in 20 show um and let us know if you like what we're doing if you'd like to see any guests or or anybody on the show um and thanks for everything evan thanks for having me buddy thanks for the good time (laughs)